This t-statistic is actually just one of many t-statistics we can form that follow a general form. A t-statistic is just when we have a sample statistic minus its corresponding population parameter divided by an estimated standard error of the statistic. Notice that this is the form we followed for our one sample t-test. We just simply had a sample mean minus the population mean divided by the estimated standard error of the mean. We'll see many t-statistics in this course, but notice that they'll all follow this general form. In this module, we'll see three different types of t-tests. A one sample test when we have a single sample from a population we know the mean of but don't know the variance of. Next, we'll see how to perform a dependent measures t-test, and finally, an independent measures t-test. Let's start with the one sample t-test. And starting with our general form, let's substitute in, with just words, what we'll be using. So with the one mean, we simply have a sample mean minus the population mean divided by the estimated standard error of the mean. Now notice the population mean in this case is referring to if HO is true, that is, if there is no effect. Just like when we had our z-test, we'll still need to know a population mean if the null hypothesis is true. This will limit our t-test to only certain scenarios, but as we move forward, we'll see how we can revise our t-statistic to not have to know the population mean before treatment. Now if I fill this in with our statistics, we'll see our t sub x bar, that is, our sample mean minus the population mean before treatment, or more formally, the mean of the sampling distribution of means assuming the null hypothesis is true, divided by the estimated standard error. That's our one sample t-test. So let me add that in here and let's see how we can calculate this using jump. Now if I go to the data set, life and hours of 100 CFL bulbs, you can find this in the module journal under bulb life. Now this is a scenario where a manufacturer has made a particular claim. They claim a 6,000 hour life of their CFL bulbs. Now we have a claim to test. We don't know the population standard deviation However, we can collect data on 100 CFL bulbs and measure their lifespan. That's what this data set has, the number of hours each bulb ran before it burned out and also the brand of bulb. We won't be using brand in this example, but we may come back to this later. In Jump, to analyze these data, we'll do something very similar to when we used a z-test. That is, we'll go to the Analyze Distribution Platform and cast hours before burnout as our Y column. What we'll get is a histogram showing the hours before burnout for these 100 bulbs. Under the red triangle, next to hours before burnout, we'll again go to the test mean section. Remember, this is still a one sample hypothesis test, so it makes sense we're using the distribution platform, which is all about one sample questions. Under the test mean section, we'll enter 6,000 as our hypothesized mean, but this time we will not enter a standard deviation. We don't know the standard deviation of the population, so we can't enter it here. Instead, Jump will use our standard deviation of the sample as an estimate of the population, and in so doing, we'll have a calculated estimated standard error rather than a true standard error. When I click OK, Jump will return the result, showing us our p-values, test statistic, and our estimates. Let's step through each of these. First, we have the standard error of the mean. Remember, this is an estimated standard error. It's calculated using the square root of the population variance estimate, that is S squared, divided by the sample size. We can also find this value by simply taking the standard deviation estimate divided by the square root of N. It'll be more convenient for us to start thinking in terms of variances, so that's what I'll do here. Next, we have the actual test statistic, that is our T sub X bar. This is calculated using the estimated mean, that is 5,955, minus the presumed mean, the hypothesized mean of 6,000 hours, divided by that estimated standard error. We also have our degrees of freedom, an idea I'll come back to later, and our two-tailed p-value. In this case, we can see that the probability of randomly sampling bulbs that would show this amount of effect or more would be relatively unlikely if the null hypothesis were true. Another way of saying that is, if these bulbs actually did on average last 6,000 hours, it would be unlikely we would get this difference from 6,000. 
So notice, even though we're using a new test statistic, the t-test statistic, we can still use our same decision. That is, we perform our hypothesis test, and if our p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. We can also say that this result is statistically significant. However, if our p-value were to be greater than alpha, we would fail to reject or retain the null hypothesis. So going back, this result is statistically significant. It would be unlikely if the hours that these bulbs actually lasted was 6,000, that we would observe a sample mean at 5,955. Now this brings up an important point we'll come back to later. Although we have a statistically significant result, do we think this result matters? We've just shown that it's unlikely that the bulb life is really 6,000 hours, and we've shown this because our sample mean was 5,955 hours. So we've lost 55 hours off our bulb life out of 6,000. We're able to show statistically that it was unlikely to obtain this mean if really the bulbs on average last 6,000, but would anyone care? So statistical significance does not say anything about the practical significance of a result. It does not say whether anyone would care about the result. Statistical significance only addresses one question. Do we think this mean was likely to occur given the sampling situation and given that the null hypothesis states that the mean should be 6,000. This mean was unlikely if the true population mean for bulb life was 6,000, but it probably doesn't really matter overall. So do not conflate statistical significance and practical significance. But again, notice, even though we have a new test statistic, we can use our same decision. If our p-value is less than our standard of evidence, that is, if our p-value is more extreme, than our standard of evidence, we're able to reject the null hypothesis. So now we can add to our t-test table here a one-sample t-test, which we find under Analyze Distribution.